Welcome back to Classic Tractor Fever. Do you ever wish you could get some tractor restoration tips and insights from someone who really knows what they're doing? Of course, no one knows it all, but we thought it would be valuable to hear from some of those with real experience in restoring classic tractors. So let's go in the shop. Part of the problem with collecting early tractors is the fact that sometimes parts aren't readily available. You have, kind of have to go to different links to get uh, those parts either made or reproduced or uh, you know have to wait until you find an original. A tractor that I'm working on currently is a uh, 1912 International Type C Mogul. Part of working on that is uh, is finding parts, you know, either doing that or, or making parts, which is kind of what we're talking about here today. So historically, when you need a part for a tractor that you are, are working on that's not readily available, uh, you know, you would go to a pattern maker and have them make a pattern, and they would take that to a uh, foundry that would then cast that part, and then you would have to have it machined and ready to go. Uh, we've kind of shortened that process through 3D printers. The part I'm making here today is for my uh, International Mogul tractor. Uh, this is uh, part of the screen cooling system. So this is the actual part that uh, holds the pipe uh, that goes through the cooling system and supports it so it doesn't uh, bounce up and down. So part of my reasoning behind uh, printing another copy of it, even though I have one today, is uh, just in case somebody might need one down the road because uh, this is something that will be riveted to the screen cooling tank. So it's not going to be something that's easy to take off, which is something that I actually ran into when I was looking for the part myself. To start out with printing a, a part that you already have, I use a, a 3D scanner of sorts. So uh, what it does is basically take a lot of many pictures just around it and from all different angles uh, and then combines all those parts into a CAD drawing which essentially is a, a 3D model of the parts and then once I take that into uh, the 3D printing software it, it cuts it into layers so each layer where the 3D printer moves around is is a layer of that print uh, so it will do that for you once you have the CAD model and then you're able to print the, the actual object. So with a part like we're making today, it would take a pattern maker, say, probably three days to make the pattern, uh, whereas with a 3D printer, we can make this in th three hours. With, so it shortens the time quite a bit. And also uh, from a uh, money aspect, uh, you know, this print will you know, only cost us probably, uh, you know, five ten dollars where to, for to have a pattern maker make this it would uh, it would certainly be a lot more than that one good thing about having a plastic pattern versus a uh, traditional wood pattern is this this won't ever deteriorate uh, you know and I can print another one uh, just like this uh, in a short amount of time too so it's it's very cost effective and uh, it essentially lasts forever so one of the neat things about uh, printing something like this is that you can actually go ahead and put the holes uh, in place where you need them. Uh, so it's actually a functioning part when you're done. Uh, you know, so you, can, you can put thread in. Uh, it, it's pretty amazing what this will do. Uh, it'll also kind of print some of the texture. You can, uh, you can kind of see it in there and uh, there was a faint part number on the part itself and you can just about see it. It's, it's really faint though. So here's the original and the printed part next to each other. You can see they're uh, pretty close as far as, uh, uh, you know, just small imperfections are both in there. Even, you know, a little tip here, uh, even some little lines within the casting itself made it into the print. There's a lot of options when you look at 3D printers. It's kind of hard to sift through uh, what you need. Uh, basically what I looked at was uh, print size first. Uh, so that there's an area in which you can print. Uh, I tried to get a larger one just in case uh, it's kind of like a shed. You, you know, you never buy big enough. So uh, I tried to get as large as possible with the options that I needed and also keep the price reasonable. You can get printers from uh, to where it ranges from, you know, a couple hundred dollars uh, well into the thousands of dollars. Uh, this is probably a, a mid-range machine, uh, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, over $500, but, uh, but for the amount of projects that I plan on doing with it, uh, it's, it's well worth it as opposed to, uh, you know, getting a pattern maker to make patterns every single time. 
so this is a Prusa I3 MK3. Uh, it has a heated bed surface. Uh, it, it uses single filament. Uh, it has a pretty large print size. Uh, it, it's independent of a computer, so you don't actually have to have it connected to a computer, which makes it nice. Uh, you know, once, once you have the file plugged in, it'll print directly from there, no problem. Uh, it can also be upgraded to where you use two different materials. So if you want to mix colors or uh, have, you know, different types of materials, it, it'll also print uh, a metal infused plastic, a wood infused plastic, just in case you want to use something like that uh, for different applications. It'll also print a rubberized texture. So that's, you know, there's, there's plenty of options to use uh, and, you know, make it, make whatever you need really. If you have questions or a topic you'd like to hear more about on Classic Tractor Fevers in the shop, message it to us on Facebook or send us an email at info at classictractorstv.com and we'll do our best to share some answers.